Dear students, this is part two of unit three, natural resources. In this video, we will be discussing about water resource. So, water is one of the most precious resource. It is the resource without which existence of anyone would be impossible. Water hold key properties that makes it unique. For example, water molecules bind each other very tightly with the help of hydrogen bond, and it is the reason why water can even move upwards in the tall trees. Not only this. Water is an excellent solvent in which everything gets dissolved easily. It is because of this property that dissolved oxygen is found in water, which provides suitable environmental conditions for aquatic life form to survive. Water is also needed even by large mammals like elephant. In fact, elephant cool their body surface with the help of water. Water has cooling effect, which is correlated to its high heat of vaporization. High heat of vaporization means that liquid water, when it gets converted into vapor, then heat from the surrounding is absorbed. So heat absorption provides cooling effect. Also, water shows anomalous expansion behavior. That means when water freezes, ice is formed, and ice floats on the surface. It is light in weight, and because of this property. Aquatic animals are able to survive even when lake freezes, because the inner water is still there. Ice floats only on the top. Not only this, water is also important for economic development of the country. Water is crucial resource. Agricultural output is dependent upon how much is the water availability for irrigation. Similarly, industrial operation require large amount of water. So, in a way, we can say that water resource is the resource on which economic activity and survival of all living organism depends. Water on Earth can be divided into two types. First, saline water that comprises of 97% of water on Earth. Saline water means water has very high amount of salt content and it is present in ocean and sea. Ideally, this saline water cannot be consumed by anyone because if we do consume it. Then our body will undergo osmosis and a person may collapse. So for our economic need and for domestic need, we are dependent on fresh water. However, on Earth, just three percent of water is fresh water. Fresh water means that water has very less amount of salt content. Out of this three percent of water which exists as fresh water, majority of it is in the form of ice cap. So two percent of fresh water is in the form of ice cap, which is not accessible to us. So for our requirements, we are dependent on just one percent of water that is present in surface and groundwater resource. So this is the water, one percent, which is quite crucial for our economic need and for meeting the requirement of our day-to-day -day life. Water is refilled in surface as well as groundwater with the help of water cycle. Water cycle include five main step. So the first step is evaporation, in which liquid water gets converted into vapors. Second step is condensation, in which liquid vapor condenses to form clouds. Third step is precipitation, in which clouds bring down rainfall. Fourth step is infiltration, in which the precipitation or rainfall seep underground and recharge groundwater body. Fifth step of water cycle is surface runoff. In which some amount of precipitation moves along with the surface and join nearby water stream. So these five main step of water cycle govern how much is the water availability in that region. And according to the global water use, majority of water which is available is utilized for agricultural output. For agricultural activity, we require 69 percent of water globally. For industrial need, 23 percent of water is required. And for municipal and domestic work, seven percent of water is needed. Across the world, rainfall is not uniform, and thereby fresh water resource vary from place to place. In fact, if we see this map, water is quite unevenly distributed across the world. Some places have abundant water, while others are facing water deficit. For example, countries which are marked in red here, like India. Parts of Africa, Middle East. These are the countries where water deficit is extremely high. So these countries are witnessing physical water scarcity. Even water is so low that day-to-day -day activities are uh, not even being fulfilled. Other countries which are marked in orange highlight economic water scarcity. 
that means water is not enough to do economic activities other countries like countries of america europe they are having no problem in water supply in fact there is little or no water scarcity so there are two types of fresh water resource which we can access first ground water and second surface water let us see in detail few points about ground water resource so ground water resource is the resource which is present underground and it is refilled by rainfall so if we consider this as soil then within soil there are different layers of rock first layer is permeable layer through which water can percolate further downwards second layer is semi permeable layer through which slightly water can percolate downwards and the last layer is the impermeable layer through which water cannot percolate so if rainfall happens then water is trapped in between these three layers so the first place where water is trapped is between permeable and semi permeable layer and this is known as unconfined aquifer rain water also can further seep through this semi permeable layer and may pass into the next aquifer the next aquifer is known as confined aquifer so these two aquifer unconfined as well as confined aquifer are part of groundwater resource to fulfill our needs we are extracting groundwater from these two aquifers and the point is that nowadays water table is becoming extremely low so over extraction of groundwater resource can lead to many problems over extraction of groundwater resource can lead to following problems first subsidence of land subsidence of land means that in a place where groundwater is extracted in that area there is geological instability that means land becomes uneven or we can say the support system of rock becomes disbalanced in that place so if there is any house which is present on a place where groundwater is extracted that house gets tilted to one side same way railway track bent say or if there is any kind of sewage pipe drainage pipe that pipe may get leaked out so subsidence of land is one problem associated with over extraction of groundwater second problem is lowering of water table so in a place where well tube wells or any kind of uh, mechanism is used for over extracting ground water in that place water table becomes very low third problem is ground water contamination especially if the place is ne near to the coastal region then it becomes very easy for sea water to get mixed up with ground water if the level of ground water is low so sea level intrusion is very common and this lead to groundwater contamination in the coastal area if there is over extraction of groundwater so fresh water resource is really crucial we have just analyzed the importance of fresh water that is groundwater resource now let us see the second type of fresh water resource that is surface water resource so surface water resource is the amount of water which is present in river lake pond and it is recharged with the help of rainfall across the world surface water that means water present in rivers lake pond etc is extremely uneven so places which receive heavy rainfall are always filled with water but there are countries where water is very very less for example countries like india middle east south africa are the countries which are facing water deficit and are always in acute water shortage as global supply of water dwindle followed by unprecedented population growth and climate change nations and citizens are rising against each other in the fight for scarce and necessary resource that is water which often leads to water conflict for example middle east countries for years have been engaged in clashes over sharing of water resource so let us study this first example of water conflict middle east countries for example turkey syria iran iraq egypt they are all facing acute water shortage so three rivers flow through middle east country first nile river second tigris river and third euphrates river so all the countries are fighting over the water resource of these three river because water is precious and it is extremely less in the, this part of the world nile is the river which is a shared water resource between ethiopia sudan and egypt nile river originate from ethiopia flows into sudan and finally moves into egypt and join mediterranean sea out of all these countries ethiopia is the country from which river originate 
Generally, it is observed that when river originate from a place, that a state or country try to claim more right to use water resource. And in this case, Ethiopia is claiming more right to use water resource. In fact, Ethiopia is planning to construct multiple dams on this river. And if dams are con constructed, then flow of water will be interrupted in Sudan and Egypt. In fact, Egypt is the country which is facing already water deficit because most of the land is desert. Population of Egypt and Sudan is increasing every day. So, with interruption in the flow of Nile River, Egypt will face its worst, its worst water crisis. Other two rivers in Middle East are Tigris River and Euphrates River. These rivers are shared between Turkey, Iraq and Syria. In fact, Tigris River flow through Turkey, Iraq and finally join Persian Gulf. Euphrates is the river which originate from Turkey, moves through Syria and then flows into Iraq and Persian Gulf. So the two countries which are sharing Tigris River are Turkey and Iraq. On the other hand, Euphrates River is a shared water resource between three countries, that means Turkey, Syria and Iraq. So, Turkey is the country which is the origin point of both Tigris as well as Euphrates River. And here in this case, Turkey is claiming more right to use water resource of these two rivers. In fact, Turkey is planning to create multiple dam project. Around 22 dams would be built by Turkey. And in this process, flow of water will be blocked in Syria and Iraq. Not only this, Turkey is planning to sell its water of these two rivers to other Middle East countries like Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, which are already witnessing water deficit. So, the water of Tigris and Euphrates has become a matter of conflict between Turkey, Syria and Iraq. Because if Turkey claims more right to use water resource and build dam, then water flow will be affected in Syria and Iraq. Second case study is related to water conflict between Punjab and Haryana. So Satlaj River is a matter of conflict between Punjab and Haryana. It is an ongoing water dispute. Let us see the main reason behind this dispute. So Satlaj River is part of Indus River system. Indus River system includes six river, Indus, Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi Bias and Satlaj. So in this river flow has already been affected due to many barrages and dams which have already been constructed over it. In 1960, in this water treaty was signed between India's Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and Pakistan President Ayub Khan. According to this treaty, Pakistan was allocated in this Jhelum and Chenab river water. That means India has no right to block or interrupt the supply of water of these three rivers. That means Indus, Jhelum and Chena. On the other hand, India was allocated water of Ravi, Bias and Satlaj. This means that India was allowed to use water of Ravi, Bias and Satlaj in any economic way as possible. When this treaty was signed in 1960, at that time, water of Ravi, Bias and Satlaj was flowing through undivided Punjab. But then, at that point, in 1955, Ravi, Bias and Satlaj water, which was around 15.85 million acre feet, was already being shared between undivided Punjab, Rajasthan and Jammu Kashmir. That means, this undivided Punjab, which was having huge amount of water through Ravi, Bias and Satlaj, was diverting its water to Rajasthan. Indra Gandhi Canal was created in order to divert the flow. So, Rajasthan is a drought prone area and thereby Rajasthan was able to fulfill its water requirement by getting the water from undivided Punjab. So, in the share, undivided Punjab was getting 7.2 million acre feet. Undivided Punjab was providing Rajasthan with 8 million acre feet. And also Jammu Kashmir was getting 0.6 million acre feet of water from Ravi Bias and Satlaj. But after in this water treaty, things became different. In the year 1966, state reorganization took place in India. So the place where earlier undivided Punjab was existing, at that place three new states were formed. These three new states were Punjab, Himachal Pradesh and Haryana. Now after 1966, things became totally different. Why? Because these newly formed states started demanding more water. On one hand, Punjab was getting water from three rivers, that means Ravi, Bias and Satlaj. 
on the other hand haryana was getting water supply only from yamuna so haryana required more water to support agriculture since haryana was the state that was undergoing green revolution when there was high demand from the side of haryana then in that case it was decided to amend the previous ratio so the ratio of water which was existing before that time was changed and modified in 1976 amount of water was decided to be shared with haryana so it was decided as per 1976 that punjab will provide 3.5 million acre feet to haryana amount of water that will be given to punjab was 3.5 million acre feet also delhi will get 0.2 million acre feet now how this water would be provided so for this it was decided that satluj river will be connected to yamuna satluj river which flows through punjab would be connected to haryana yamuna river with the help of satluj yamuna link canal so satluj is the river which flows in punjab yamuna is the river which flows in haryana and the proposal was to interconnect satluj and yamuna with this interlink canal in in fact in the year 1982 indira gandhi inaugurated the construction of satluj yamuna link canal but at that time it faced with massive opposition from the residents of punjab further in 1985 rajiv gandhi signed punjab accord with akali dal leader harchan singh and according to this accord it was decided that tribunal will be formed tribunal is the judiciary body which include eminent judges from supreme court and high court and they were allowed to do take decision on water matter soon after this in 1986 iradi tribunal was formed to resolve water dispute matter between punjab and haryana in fact iradi tribunal also agreed for the formation of satluj yamuna link canal but then punjab residents have always opposed this idea the reasons are clear first punjab state has been predicted to go dry after 2029 it is the state which already require lot of water to meet the requirement of agriculture not only this ground water has already been over exploited for irrigation purpose punjab is already sharing water resource with rajasthan through indira gandhi canal and thereby the state is not willing to share its water with another state like haryana moreover farmers are already committing suicide and water is very deficit in punjab in this situation punjab has not been able to construct its site of satluj yamuna link canal so right now the situation is that in the state of punjab satluj river is flowing in the haryana state yamuna is flowing and the interconnection that is satluj yamuna link canal is still incomplete 92 kilometers of the portion of canal which lies in haryana has been completed because haryana would get benefited because of this canal however punjab site of 122 kilometer is still incomplete so this is an ongoing matter of dispute between punjab and haryana water conflict case study number 3 kaveri water dispute between karnataka and tamil nadu Kaveri river originates from Karnataka flows through Tamil Nadu and finally joins Bay of Bengal This Kaveri river is a matter of conflict between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu This conflict dates to around 100 million year back when Britishers were ruling our country During British time period Kaveri was shared between two states princely state of Mysore and Madras presidency Both these states had high water demand Britishers have developed agriculture in Madras presidency and therefore there was need for more water In order to resolve dispute between Mysore and Madras the treaty of 1924 was signed So this treaty of 1924 was signed between Madras presidency and princely state of Mysore for water utilization of Kaveri Britishers have developed agriculture in Madras presidency and thereby they had allocated more water to madras presidency in this treaty of 1924 so madras received 75% of kaveri water share mysore got 25% of kaveri water share moreover as a part of this treaty both the states mysore as well as madras were allowed to construct dam so princely state of mysore was allowed to construct krishna raj sagar dam 
Same way, Madras Presidency was permitted to construct Maytur Dam on this river. Last point related to this treaty of 1924 was its validity. Validity of the treaty was for next 50 years, that means till 1974. After independence from British rule, states of India were reorganized. So the same place where Mysore and Madras was there during British time, four new states were formed. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Pondicherry. All these were the newly formed states and required water of Kaveri. So treaty of 1924 was amended to meet the requirement of newly formed state. According to this amendment, Tamil Nadu as well as Pondicherry were allocated 75% of Kaveri water. Karnataka received 23% of water share. Kerala received 2% of water share because Kerala had other rivers like Peria river to meet its requirement. So still after amendment, Tamil Nadu received majority of water from Kaveri. Treaty of 1924 was valid for next 50 years that means till 1974. So finally in 1974 this treaty came to an end. And when this treaty of 1924 was no longer valid, then Karnataka and Tamil Nadu started contesting for more Kaveri water resource. Tamil Nadu wanted to implement provision of previous treaty of 1924 in which the state was getting 75% of water share. And they argued that they need more water in order to support agricultural ag activities. On the other hand, Karnataka was in favor of equal distribution of Kaveri water. That means Karnataka wanted 50% of water share. Karnataka also claimed more right to use Kaveri water because the river Kaveri originated from Karnataka. So in this case, the state Karnataka as well as Tamil Nadu were fighting over Kaveri water resource. And when states are unable to resolve matter on their own, then there is a provision in our constitution to form tribunal. So tribunals are formed under Interstate Water Dispute Tribunal Act of 1956. As per this law, if states are unable to decide on water matter, then they can request for tribunal formation. So in this case, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu requested for the formation of tribunal and finally, Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal was formed in 1990. This Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal gave its interim judgment. Interim judgment means short time judgment until the final judgment is out. So during the time period, Till final judgment is out, it was declared that Karnataka will continue to share 205 TMCF, that means 205 1000 million cubic feet of water with Tamil Nadu. But in 1995, Karnataka state received very less rainfall. And we know that South Indian rivers like Kaveri are dependent on rainfall. So in 1995, when rainfall was very less, Kaveri was filled with very less amount of water and thereby Karnataka simply refused to share even 205 TMCF with Tamil Nadu. And this resulted in violent clash between the two states. So Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal awarded its final judgment in 2007. Let's see what were the norms in the judgment. So as per this judgment, Karnataka was allocated 270 TMCF which is around 37% of total water. Tamil Nadu received 58% of water, Pondicherry 4%, Kerala 1%. But this was not what states demanded. Karnataka wanted equitable sharing of water. That means at least 50% of water share. But here the state was getting only 37%. Similarly, Tamil Nadu had requested around 75% of water which was there in the previous uh, treaty of 1924. But as per this award, 58% was allocated to Tamil Nadu. Pondicherry and Kerala had other sources to meet water requirement, but the main issue is between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So since Karnataka was not receiving 50% and Tamil Nadu was not getting 75% according to this tribunal award, therefore both the states requested tribunal to reconsider its judgment. So finally tribunal again reconsidered the judgment, they went through the data related to water supply and how much is the water need in every state and finally new judgment was given in 2018. So Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal analyzed water requirement of every state and gave its final judgment in 2018. 
in this judgment karnataka share was increased by 2% that means karnataka share was now 39% and tamil nadu share was reduced by 2% that means in the new judgment 56% was the allocated water share for tamil nadu pondicherry and kerala water share re remained same so judges of tribunal suggested that tamil nadu can fulfill 2% of its water requirement by utilizing ground water so kaveri water dispute especially emerged when there is less rainfall so in the case of water deficit or less rainfall karnataka and tamil nadu have witnessed violent clashes so what is the solution for kaveri water dispute first tamil nadu should grow agricultural crops that are less water intensive at present paddy is the popular crop in tamil nadu but then this paddy require large amount of water so tamil nadu need to shift its agricultural pattern to those type of crop which need less water second there is also requirement to predict rain so better rain monitoring system are needed so that accurate rainfall can be predicted in these state there is also need to have better legal framework on kaveri water dispute so surface water is so precious that in the quest to obtain fresh water resource water conflicts emerge between countries as well as state these water conflicts are always associated with ripple effects that have shaped international relationships as well as national laws so these water conflicts are likely to become much more pronounced in future due to climate change scenario so we should be well prepared and international community as well as government should give a thought about different types of water conflict another problem that can be correlated to surface water is drought so drought is prolonged dry period in the natural climate cycle that can occur anywhere in the world so drought is the situation in which precipitation rate is very less and evaporation of water take place at very high rate so it is like a slow onset disaster characterized by lack of precipitation and ultimately it result in water shortage so usually we find that drought happens because of following reasons first less rainfall due to climate change so climate change is taking place due to greenhouse gases such as co2 methane nitrous oxide these greenhouse gases trap solar radiation so more trapping of solar radiation result in increase of global uh, temperature of the planet which affect even rainfall cycle plantation of water intensive crop like sugarcane or paddy can result in the situation of drought geographical location also influence the uh, monsoon pattern and it may lead to the situation of drought lastly drought can also happen due to deforestation so cutting down of trees definitely affect the region so when trees are not present in a place then soil will not be binded properly and as a result of which precipitation will not happen in the proper manner let us try to understand drought with the help of one case study example of marathwada region maharashtra so marathwada region of maharashtra continuously face a drought in fact marathwada region has been reeling under drought since 2013 maharashtra one of the important state of india can be subdivided into different region like konkan western maharashtra khandesh vidarbha and marathwada among all of these region marathwada face worst drought and water scarcity in fact water scarcity became so much intense that government had to initiate water train which is known as jal dood in order to fulfill the demand of water for the local people let us try to understand what are the reason behind the drought of marathwada scanty rainfall due to geographical location is one reason behind this condition so actually marathwada region is under southwest monsoon when southwest monsoon reach the western coast lot of rainfall is received but as these monsoon move towards the eastern side that means towards marathwada region very less rainfall is actually received by marathwada Marathwada in fact has received less than 40% of average rainfall in past few years. Second reason is that Marathwada is a landlocked region. The entire region is drained by river like Godavari. 
So there is no major river as such, but Godavari and its tributary are draining the area of Maratwada. These rivers carry very little water, especially during summers and in the time period of less rainfall. Along with surface water, underground water resource has also been affected. Over exploitation of groundwater is posing now serious ecological challenge in the region. Third reason behind drought of Maharashtra is related to wrong type of plantation. So plantation of water intensive crop has been noticed in Maharashtra. In fact, Maharashtra is producing 40% of sugar production, which is second to UP. Now sugar production requires a lot of water. In fact, an average of 2068 liter of water is required to produce 1 kg of sugar. So in Maharashtra, almost 72% of water is directed to the production of sugar cane. So this is one reason why Maratwada is witnessing the condition of drought. Lastly, drought can have social economic consequences. For example, in the area of Maharashtra, farmers have lost major portion of kharif as well as rapi crop. Farmer distress and suicide rate is maximum in Maharashtra. Many people who have faced economic loss, especially related to farming activities, are now moving to other cities. At present, there have been certain steps taken up in order to overcome water crisis. So the solution in order to mitigate drought crisis in Maratwada region of Maharashtra are following. First, social forestry scheme should be promoted to increase tree cover. That means local people should be mobilized to plant multiple trees. In fact, tree cover ensures uh, maximum rainfall and also trap lot of rainwater. Second, reuse of water is to be promoted in washroom and kitchen of local people. Rainwater harvesting is the mechanism by which water can be uh, harvested and the shortage of water can be met through harvested water. Moreover, cutting down of tree as well as grazing should be controlled in the region. And lastly, water intensive crops should not be promoted. In fact, less water intensive crops should be planted in the area which is already prone to drought. So we have just observed that surface water is essential. But this resource is increasingly becoming scarce. By 2025, two-thirds of global population may face water shortage. An inability to access water threatens the security, stability as well as environmental sustainability of all nations. Climate change and water shortage will further escalate water conflict and may increase the chance of drought. So we need to be better prepared to deal with these incidents. Another problem related to surface water is flood. Changing climate is dramatically altering waterways and swelling the flow of rivers, leading to flood. So what is flood? Flood is basically a situation in which there is overflow of water with submerged land. But humans have significantly contributed to the problem of floods, though floods are also natural. Humans are modifying systems and altering the balance of nature. Unplanned development or mismanagement of dams are factors which could seriously escalate the damage caused by flood. Flood is caused due to following reason. First reason, heavy rainfall. In the present time, heavy rainfall is caused due to following factors. First, irregular monsoon pattern. So cutting down of trees, Increase in urban area has promoted more heating of land. With more heating, low pressure zone is formed which tend to attract clouds from high pressure zone. This leads to more rainfall in certain places. Second factor for heavy rainfall is climate change. Climate change is the phenomena in which greenhouse gases like CO2, methane, nitrous oxide trap solar radiation within atmosphere. Increase in global temperature due to trapping of solar radiation is changing the rainfall pattern across the world. In certain parts of the world, heavy rainfall is re being received due to climate change. Third factor which is responsible for heavy rainfall is urban heat island. These days, cities are becoming more prone to floods and the reason is these cities are part of urban heat islands. So in cities, we find that most of the infrastructure is based on cement, brick, glasses, etc. There is not enough tree cover. As a result of which, 
cement, glass and other material trap lot of solar radiation. With more heating, the place of city become low pressure zone and tend to attract clouds from high pressure zone. Therefore, all the cities in India, for example, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, are becoming prone to floods. Another reason behind flood is less percolation of water in ground. And this is caused due to concrete ground and deforestation. So, in cities, most of the area is concrete made out of cement. So, there is no space for water to percolate inside ground. Similarly, deforestation or cutting down of trees interrupt the flow of water in the soil. Trees tend to bind soil properly. But in absence of tree cover, we find that surface runoff become much more. In that situation, water tend to accumulate on land. Third reason related to less percolation of water is damage to floodplains. It is very natural for rivers to overflow. Water which overflow during flood can be soaked through floodplains. So floodplain is an adjacent area which is present around river. It has absorbent type of soil material. During flood, this high amount of absorbent soil can soak large amount of flood. But then sadly, we tend to neglect the ecological importance of floodplain and we build houses, urban colonies in the area of floodplain. To give you a few examples, Akshardham Temple in Delhi has been constructed on floodplain of Yamuna River. Same way, Periyar River of Kerala has been utilized to create International Cochin Airport. So if floodplains are not available and there is heavy rainfall, if by chance river overflow, then water will not percolate down inside the ground. It will stay and it will move into the, into the building or infrastructure that has been built up on floodplain. So let us try to understand flood tragedy with the help of one case study. This is Uttarakhand flood tragedy 2013. Uttarakhand is the state which is considered to be very eco-fragile state because it is prone to earthquake, landslides, etc. Uttarakhand is also the state which is popular tourist destination because Gangotri, Yamunotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath are the pilgrim site present in Uttarakhand state. In the year 2013, there was a major tragedy which affected Kedarnath and other low-lying region of this state. So in this tragedy, it was noticed that houses just collapsed like pack of card. Similarly, the area where Ganga flows were totally submerged. Let us try to figure out the reasons behind Uttarakhand flood tragedy. So the first reason is irregular monsoon pattern in the year 2013. So to understand irregular monsoon pattern, we need to know what is normal monsoon pattern. So in normal monsoon pattern, Bay of Bengal is usually the high pressure zone. Monsoon cloud move from Bay of Bengal to northeast part of the country, bringing heavy rainfall in northeast regions of Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, etc. Moreover, with high rainfall, tropical evergreen forest has developed in northeast areas. After bringing heavy shower in north northeast region, monsoon cloud tend to move towards northern part of our country. As soon as these monsoon cloud strike Himalayan range, heavy rainfall is witnessed in the parts of Uttarakhand, UP and other northern states. But in 2013, monsoon pattern was irregular. And let us see what was the irregularity. So in the time period of 2013, Uttarakhand was overheated. With overheating, Uttarakhand was under low pressure zone. Monsoon clouds move from high pressure to low pressure zone. So, Bay of Bengal was at high pressure zone and monsoon clouds drifted towards Uttarakhand directly instead of bringing heavy shower in northeast region. So, during 2013, slight amount of rainfall was witnessed in parts of northeast but majority of clouds accumulated above Uttarakhand bringing sudden heavy rainfall which is also known as cloud burst. So cloud burst or irregular monsoon pattern was one reason behind flood tragedy of 2013 in Uttarakhand. Second reason behind flood tragedy was over accumulation of snow in Chorabari glacier in the previous year that is 2012. So Chorabari glacier is source of water for Mandakni river. Mandakni river flows through Kedarnath. In the previous year, that means in 2012, this glacier was overfilled with snow. 
and in 2013 heavy shower was being received by the state of uttarakhand which melted down entire ice so melting of large amount of glacier and ice resulted in overflow of mandakini river third reason associated with uttarakhand flood tragedy is unplanned development in uttarakhand uttarakhand is an eco fragile state which is prone to earthquake and landslide but to accommodate tourist who visit every year tourist destination state has gone ahead with unplanned kind of development do you think it is right model of development when we make houses just on the bank of rivers do you think it is right model of development when we create houses residential colony building hotel and lodges on the slope of mountain range but in uttarakhand this kind of development is very common and therefore during uttarakhand flood tragedy there was huge loss to economy as well as life due to unplanned development second case study related to flood kerala flood tragedy 2018 kerala is one of the southernmost state of india and in 2018 kerala which is also known as god zone country was in trouble because most of the area of kerala were flooded during 2018 let us try to explore the reason behind kerala flood tragedy so the first reason is heavy rainfall never before kerala has witnessed high amount of rainfall as it was observed in 2018 scientists have correlated the phenomena of climate change to be responsible for heavy rainfall climate change that means increase in the temperature due to global warming as a result of accumulation of greenhouse gas is causing altered uh, weather phenomena across the world in some part rainfall is very high and in other areas we find deficient amount of water so climate change is considered to be the main reason behind heavy rainfall during 2018 in kerala second reason associated with kerala flood tragedy is mismanagement of dams in kerala there are multiple dams for example mulla peria dam now all these dams are the reservoir where water is stored in order to make hydropower electricity but then these reservoir have certain capacity to be filled with water during heavy rainfall of 2018 these dams were filled to their maximum capacity ideally in the situation of flood these dams should be opened slowly and gradually to discharge the water but since authorities have never experienced rainfall of this much amount before in kerala therefore authorities were not well prepared they waited for rainfall to subside but rainfall continued for next 2 weeks and as a result of which dams were filled to their maximum capacity later on authorities opened the dam gate but it was very late and also without any warning so the low lying region where dam was located also got submerged so this is a human factor responsible for kerala flood tragedy not only mulla peria dam but kerala in total has 62 major dams 36 dams are managed by state electricity board 20 dams are managed by irrigation department two dams are managed by state water authority four dams are managed by tamil nadu water resource department in fact the area which got submerged in kerala are those regions where dams were located so mismanagement of dams was definitely one of the reason behind flood tragedy of kerala third reason behind kerala flood tragedy is rejection of gadgil report on western ghat western ghat is very important area of our country it is considered as biodiversity hot spot it is the region where we find tropical evergreen forest and kerala so western ghat include parts of maharashtra gujarat karnataka kerala and tamil nadu in fact to save western ghat there have been many protests and environmental movement in 1980s So the environmental movements in Western Ghat to protect forest are following: first, Silent Valley movement, in which local residents of Kerala they had protested against the construction of dam in the rich forest space of Silent Valley area in Kerala. Second, Save Western Ghat movement. So in 1980s, people across the Western Ghat stretch marched on their foot to raise awareness about this tropical evergreen forest. In fact. in western ghat movement people motivated each other to plant more trees and they resisted any kind of developmental activity in this space third epico movement epico movement was noticed in karnataka which was inspired by chipko movement 
So Epico movement was the movement in which people hugged the tree and resisted any kind of diversion of forest into agriculture or developmental projects. So these movement became very popular in 1980s and this pressurized government to create committee to look into how well we can protect Western Ghat space. So far there have been two committees formed on Western Ghat. First, Gadgil Committee. As per Gadgil Committee, entire Western Ghat should be declared as an eco-fragile or ecologically sensitive area. But then, Gadgil Committee report was rejected on the grounds that it could affect developmental process. Because if we restrict entire area as ecologically sensitive, then no longer state would be able to get revenue through developmental projects. So instead, second committee was formulated and that is Kasturi Rangan Committee. According to Kasturi Rangan Committee, entire Western Ghat does not need protection. In fact, Western Ghat can be subdivided into two types. First, 37% of area where natural landscape is present or forest is present should be declared as eco-fragile or ecologically sensitive zone. And the remaining, that means 63% of area is the cultural landscape according to Kasturi Rangan Committee which is part of human settlement, plantation and agricultural field. So Kasturi Rangan Committee recommended that only 37% of area which is natural landscape need protection and remaining can be used for developmental activity. As a result of rejection of Gardgil Committee, larger scale deforestation has been noticed in Kerala. Trees play an important role in binding of soil properly. Their deep root system maintain integrity and balance of soil. With deforestation, soil become loose and rainwater cannot percolate further downwards in soil. Deforestation in Kerala as a result of rejection of Gardgil Committee report is considered as one of the factor behind this flood tragedy. So, to conclude, water is hidden treasure that make life possible on earth. Despite the fact that we have rich resource of water scattered on earth, we are heading towards an acute water crisis. Ecosystem is destabilizing due to unorganized use of water resource across the globe. To save this precious resource, strategic rethinking is needed. So the need of the R is to formulate mega action plan to save water and to revive dry lake, pond, rivers and also to manage dams properly. Rainwater harvesting should be promoted to mitigate water scarcity. Recycling through water plants need to be made more popularized. Considering that tree help to conserve water, we need to make best possible efforts to save trees. So let us take pledge to conserve water and to plant more trees for a better tomorrow.